Lecture Two, Gateway. Twin sirens hide in the sea of history, tempting those seeking to understand and appreciate the past onto the reefs of misunderstanding and misinterpretation. These twin dangers are temporocentrism and ethnocentrism. Temporocentrism is the belief that your times are the best of all possible times. All other times are thus inferior. Ethnocentrism is the belief that your culture is the best of all possible cultures. All other cultures are thus inferior. Temporocentrism and ethnocentrism unite to cause individuals and cultures to judge all other individuals and cultures by the superior standards of their current culture. This leads to a total lack of perspective when dealing with past and/or foreign cultures, and a resultant misunderstanding and misappreciation of them. Temporocentrism and ethnocentrism tempt moderns into unjustified criticisms of the peoples of the past. Exercise one: The Adventures of Tom Sawyer is regarded as one of the great American novels. But at one point, its author despaired of finishing it. In his autobiography, Mark Twain describes reaching a point in the story where he felt unable to go on. My tank had run dry. He abandoned it for two years and turned his mind to other things. When he eventually picked up the manuscript again, he made the great discovery that the tank of his imagination. Had refilled itself in the meantime, and he was able to complete the story. This discovery was a turning point in Twain's writing career. He learned to watch out for the point in each subsequent book when his tank ran dry, and to take a break before finishing it. Exercise two. The most popular travel book, *The Travels of Sir John Mandeville*, appeared in about 1356. And immediately became astonishingly popular. This was the only travel book that Leonardo da Vinci possessed, and Christopher Columbus consulted it as he took his voyages. Scholars doubt whether there even was anyone named Mandeville, or whether the author of this account ever traveled further than his local library. His work is fanciful and entertaining. And preserved many global misconceptions from the ancient world. When real travelers came back from abroad, if their experiences did not match those of the fictional Mandeville, they did not trust their own eyes. Thus, global misunderstandings persisted throughout the Middle Ages, in spite of a good deal of global interaction. Exercise three. In a recent study led by Andy Barron at Harvard University, three to five-year-olds were shown pictures of two groups of cartoon characters: one colored purple, the other red. One group did rotten things such as break toys and cause car crashes, while the other did nice things such as help others. If the children merely saw these differently colored and differently behaving characters, they didn't seem to assign them a group identity. But if they were given names for the two groups—these are the Nifs, these are the Lups—they quickly figured out who were the good guys and who were the bad guys. In other words, at that age, the differences in the appearance of the two sets of characters—purple versus red. Were not automatically seen as cues to group membership, but once the groups had names, the children became aware of the differences between them, and understood that they belonged in different categories. Exercise four. Many people lack a clear image of their bodies and do not take very good care of themselves. You'd think people would have a fairly accurate picture of their own bodies. After all. Who is more familiar with our bodies than ourselves? Each day, we spend an enormous amount of time receiving messages from our bodies, bathing and grooming ourselves. But we have blind spots as well, 
so that our body image only approximates rather than coincides with reality. A major reason is that our bodies are constantly changing, and there is a time delay in bringing our body images up to date. Each of us tends to hold on to more or less outdated body images, such as the aging man who has difficulty recognizing the wrinkles in his face, his thinning hair, or his sagging waistline.